We are live, Tori. Oh, sounds good. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to another edition of Self Publishing Insiders. I am Jim Azevedo. I'm the Corporate Communications Manager here at Draft Digital. And it is my pleasure, my honor, to welcome our guest today, Tori C. Butler. Welcome, Tori. Hey, thanks, Jim, for having me. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hey, man. It's my pleasure. Um, so, Tori, you are an author, uh, an entrepreneur, and I also heard an actor. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do a little something on that side. <laughs> All right. All right. But we're going to talk about um, the entrepreneur aspect of this in, in particular. So, Tori, you you developed an app called Scribble, and I want to get into all of that. Um, but I also want to talk about the journey of how you got to the point where you're like, you know what, I, I need to do this thing. I need to develop this way for authors to connect with one another. So can you kind of give us the like a 30,000 view description of what the Scribble app is? And then we'll kind of talk about like how you got there in the first place. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely, Jim. And um, again, once again, right. thank you for having me on your platform. I really do appreciate this opportunity to speak with you and everyone that's tuning it's in. It's our privilege. Definitely. So uh, just a 30,000 foot view. Scribble is a social yeah. networking platform designed for authors and writers to network and connect. Uh, simply put, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of uh, media platforms that are very large uh, in numbers. Um, and that kind of plays in a disadvantage when you're trying to uh, write a book specifically, right? Or publish a book. You kind of get lost in the transactions, the algorithms, the the posts and, and all that good stuff. So that's what led me to develop this app author focused platform specifically for authors of all levels right and that includes aspiring season or just you know publishing mm -hmm. your first book to be able to have your own platform your safe haven to call home okay so before you wrote the app though you wrote one book or two books a couple of books before you even developed the app in the first place was it mm -hmm. wasn't it um where do i go from here that that come out first that came out first Okay, so tell me about where do I go from here? Because I was I was reading through the, the book and some of the reviews of the book and the table of contents, and really it 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 blew me away. So tell us about it. Definitely, I, I appreciate that. Uh let me give a quick backstory on that book. So Please, I started yeah. I started writing that book uh shortly after I graduated college in, in 2016. And then writing it and then writing it, I understood that. I had a story to tell. It might be minute, it might be large, but I understood personally yeah. that I had a story to tell and it needed to be told. So what I did was I committed to it, the process, and that's without even knowing the process, what the writing process was, publishing, editing, beta reader, yeah. like self, that's you without even Jumped knowing. in feet first. Uh, you jump in head first. You know, I have a slogan yeah. or, you know, the, the saying goes, jump off a cliff and grow your wings on the way down. And that's exactly what I did yeah. with that book. So um, as I wrote um, day in, day out, you know, and I took breaks off. A lot of it was due to, you know, just my own self-consciousness saying, yes, hey, it's, it's a stupid idea. What am I writing a book for? At the time I was 21, <laughs> yeah. 22. Uh, yeah, and you know, a I, memoir, no less. Right. 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 So that's another uh, obstacle in itself. So understanding okay. those things. Um, that kind of derailed my path. And then one specific thing I want to share as well, too. When I was in the midst of writing my book, I went to a friend of mine at the time who was who I considered a very close friend. And I pitched the idea to him just more so of a, you know, make sure, you know, warm me up, make sure, give me the confidence I need yeah. to keep going through this. Right. So I pitched it to him and I let him know, hey, bro, like I'm, I'm writing a book. I would love to hear your opinion on it, not on what I'm writing, but just me writing right. the book. Uh, and he laughed in my face, right? Very jokingly, okay. right? How we usually do, but this laugh was kind of different. It was more so of a nah. cut you. Yeah. yeah, it was more so of a nod, nah, dog. That's not that's yeah. not your lane type thing. And that crushed me. Uh, but what I did was this. Usually when people have, and this is important, usually when people have a vision, they have a goal or they have something they want to accomplish, we do the first thing which is wrong and we seek the validation of other people, right? When we seek the Great validation point, yeah. of when we seek the validation of other people, nine times out of ten, that person is going to destroy whatever dream, thought, passion that you had. Reason being is because 
they didn't have that dream, thought, or passion. You did, right? So that's number one. Yeah. You have to own whatever your dream is, whatever your passion is, whatever your goal is. You have to own that first and foremost. So getting back to my story, once that happened, that derailed me for a couple months. But then I snapped out of it and understood, you know what? Things like this are going to happen along the way. So I can't allow this to deter me because if I allow this to stop me, you know, if I were to progress through life, anything that I want to do, I would just let any small comment, any negative thing just throw me off my path and then where would I be? Right. So it's all about just taking chances. So I took that chance and uh, I finished writing the book in uh, 2020 and in t which was a tough year for a lot of people. But I finished yeah. writing, <laughs> I finished writing uh, the book. Took me four years total. Uh, took me uh, or excuse me. Four years total, finished writing the book and published it uh, at the end of 2020. And that was uh, where do I go from here? Yeah, congratulations on that release as well, man. So isn't it funny how like, the, the people who are closest to us sometimes are, you know, our closest friends and family members are the ones who kind of, they don't mean to, but they're the ones who kind of break us down or put those walls in front of us that make it even tougher to to reach our dreams um but they unknowingly they do it with love because they're just trying to protect you like oh i don't want to see you go down that path or this path over here because it's long it's arduous people will beat you down in the process but but what was it for you like what made you say well wait a second like kind of shake it off and say no 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 like my buddy's wrong i'm going to keep going like what what was that for you what was the catalyst that made you decide to keep going and get that project finished intuition intuition yeah. i can't i can't say it was you know uh like something i watched on tv or you know uh someone else i talked to that said you know what no nah, screw that you go ahead it's just intuition well let me let me interrupt you for a second i'm sorry to do that but if intuition like pulled you and kept kept you going down that path for a 20 year old you were 20 right when you started writing it right what what caused you to say, you know, I need to tell my story. I'm 20 years old, but I got a story to tell and I'm going to tell the story. Like, what was it that sparked you to like, wait a second, I got to, I have to do this thing. Yeah. And that's a great question. You know, the, the thing about it was the, the purpose outweighed everything else that people said. Okay. The, the purpose in me publishing this thing and getting the story out was bigger. The bigger picture for me was, understanding my background and where i came from if i can just tell it right and put it into words and put yeah. it out maybe i can help somebody else that's going down a similar path right. or that's going through something similar or has a friend or knows someone that's you know can relate to it if i can just help that one person then i know the deed is done so that was the that was the intricate thing that my intuition was telling okay. me that propelled me through it okay so you, you put the you put the book out right and it's maybe it's making some waves it's gaining a little bit of traction out there at, at what point did you decide that man writing a book wasn't so easy like but you got yourself through it at what point did you decide you know maybe maybe i could create a tool or an app to help other people because as i look through your background you know you you didn't have it very easy through your younger years high school um you graduated magnet come law from from high school right oh, from <laughs> college uh -huh. yep mm -hmm. and from college i'm sorry and then you went into the navy um and you know you're not the kind of person who who, who takes an easy path <laughs> let's just say um and i could tell that like you're kind of you got to yourself to the point where you're just drawn to service so I see in you, like, you know, here's this young man who's who's growing into adulthood and you're, you're coming from this place of compassion now and like you and you want to help others and, and provide a service. So can you tell us what was the catalyst for you to create the Scribble app? Definitely. And the, the process for me, after I published the book in 2020, it was pretty quick. Six months later, I had the concept that oh. that I wanted to uh, that I want to take on. Now, let me. Yeah. Pause there because uh, I'm still on this journey in creating Scribble um, to where it needs oh, to be. Sure. This is definitely a, a marathon, not a race. It's definitely a jog and not a run. Um, so, but and <laughs> get we get the, that <laughs> right. 
So, but in, in talking in the beginning of it, essentially after I published my book, that six month period, right before the actual six month mark that I started the journey, those six months I spent just reflecting on the process, process in itself, just understanding, wow, why did this take me four years? Is this the norm? Okay, if it is the norm, then how can this be shorter? Or, you know, I remember how lonely I felt on my journey, not having people to, you know, kind of talk through or walk through the journey with me, mm -hmm. you know, just feeling isolated. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of people don't talk about like the marketing part. Uh, they save that for the end when really that's that's a part of the beginning, you know, understanding how you're going to you know put your book out there to the world. So just a, a combination of all those thoughts, just I just ran through them, ran through them. And I began to look and search. And then I said, you know what? I think I think we're in this without monetary value. And this is the key uh, for me with anything that I pursue it's within mm -hmm. the bottom of my heart to to help someone else. I don't have a desire for any monetary gain uh to like screw anybody over nothing like that anything yeah. i'm pursuing is based off personal experience and then me wanting to make the process better for someone else no matter what it is and there was no exception with scribble so when i started once those thoughts came into my head it was almost immediate like almost and i you know don't want to touch too much on that part but it was almost immediate as if god told me do this without having doing conducting like a lot of research uh n without having really talking to anyone else i just yeah. hopped on that journey and i've been at it since uh 2021 uh so so once i started, so once i started the journey and this is important too i don't have a technical background at all uh, my bachelor's degree is in criminal justice shortly after i got my bachelor's like you said i went into the navy which uh, has nothing to do with criminal justice at all. So, you know, my mind's trained to that and now hopping into, you know, this lane of um, entrepreneurship and tech, right? And and, and all those yeah. different things. But the one key word that you hit on that was important was service. Uh, throughout my life, childhood, college, uh, the military, and to now, it's always been about mm -hmm. service, always been about helping somebody else. So that's what I'll carry with me uh, in everything that I do. Where does that come from, Tori? That idea of service and, and offering yourself to other people was that from your family or where, the military, your friends, your upbringing? Where does that come from? It's from my mom. It's from my mom. Mm -hmm. Just just watching watching her move and groove, and you know we have these conversations yeah. on the side, uh, you know, and she's surprised when I'm able to regurgitate things back to her, and she'll say, "Wow, you, yeah. you remember that?" or "Wow, you <laughs> saw that." And I tell her, yeah, I, I saw everything. You know, I, I saw how how hard she tried, how hard she had it being an immigrant from Nassau, Bahamas, just trying to make it mm -hmm. in, in America. So I saw those things. So just the different things that I noticed, I picked up and it kind of shaped me into the person that I am. Just wanting to be a person of service and, and helping in any way I can. Love it. Love it. Also, you strike me as a person who like. For me, if I have an idea, you know, I beat it into the ground, um, not by doing it, but by thinking about it. If I have an I some kind of intuition strike me, it's like I think about it. Can I do that? Um, you know, let me let me procrastinate. Let me think about it for another couple of years. And it seems like you are more like of a lightning kind, a lightning strike kind of a creator, where you have this idea and you're like, wow, that was powerful. I need to act on this, and then you just go out and do it. Now for the Scribble app. You did. You said you don't have a technical background. How did you go about figuring out what to do next? What was your as you went along that path? Like, how did you how did you figure out how to create an app? Uh, you know, it's it's just figuring it out. Honestly, not to repeat the same words, but honestly, just yeah. figuring it out um, because I wanted it that bad. And it's it's crazy, right? I wanted mm -hmm. to help people that bad that I put myself in this position that is extremely uncomfortable for me. Uh, being able to or having to learn uh, another set of language like the tech language and and how, you know, VCs work and funding and all these things work. Right. It's ex super Absolutely. uncomfortable. And I'm being very vulnerable with that. It is super uncomfortable for me uh, because I've never done this in my life, but I'm up to it because the my purpose right in servicing others outweighs that. So I'm ready to I'm ready to go uh, to bat for it. And then to touch on the point you said that that often happens with a lot of people 
um, again, kind of going back to the, you know, the ideas or dreams or whatever you may have, usually how it works is you have an idea, you have a passion that comes from your heart. Then it travels to your mind. Your mind's uh, job is to rationalize everything that your heart is saying. Right. And it rationalizes it via the available means and resources that you have. Right. So if your passion right. is right, but, but for a lot of us, but for a lot of us, Troy, I love where you're going with this, but for a lot of us, our minds like, don't do that. Mm -hmm. All right, we're here to keep you. We're, we want to keep you safe. You know, you're exposing yourself here, and people are going to ridicule you and make fun of you, and your idea sucks. And it's never going to work, and blah blah blah. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, and you're you're hitting it right on the head, right? And that's that's what the that's what the mind is supposed to do. It's going to tell you yes or no based off of what you've seen and what you have in front of you, right? But that's that's the yeah. key to it, right? That's that's the key right there is to not let your mind overrule your passion, right? If you have something that's mm. just burning inside of you to do, why not do it? Why not? If it's because of uh, funds, okay, cool. We can make a way, right? Because I don't necessarily have all the necessary tools I need for Scribble, right? But I'm still trying to make right. a way for it. So it's just about taking that first step. You take that first step, then that next step will come. You take that next step, then all of a sudden you find out you're walking. And once you find out you're walking, it's only a matter of time before you, before you find out you can run. Love it. Love it. Like I keep smiling. I keep having this goofy grin on my face because um, all of us I love what you're saying. So the Scribble app, it's all about making a difference. It's all about teamwork um, and that passion that you mentioned and, and that community and as I don't know if I read it somewhere or I heard you um, speak about this somewhere, but that idea of you know building not only building community but providing a safe place for for authors. So let's kind of shift gears here and talk about the the app itself and and how it works and maybe a little bit more about that community space, that safe space for authors to to come in and talk with one another and ask all the dumb questions without fear of ridicule. Right, definitely. And another piece to it is understanding that, you know, a lot of platforms are reader friendly, right? They're all about the books and the readers and the recommendations. But what I noticed was there's no specific platform just for the authors, just to be able to, like you said, ask those, ask those what, what may be called silly questions or because we've never done it before, right? So you don't know what you don't know. So to be able to get yourself uh, out there and, and begin to start your writing, uh, going through the process and then finally publishing a book, that's that's the key, right? That's what Scribble, that's what we target, those underrepresented, those not talked about as much people because we want to focus on you to get your book prepared to market and to go into the world. Okay. How does it work? How can people get their hands on the Scribble app? Can I, can I go to, to the website, the scribbleapp.com or does it for yes. Android and iPhone? Definitely. So the Scribble, the Scribble app is available on the scribbleapp.com. You'll see two links is available on the App Store and the Google Play Store uh, just by typing in Scribble. And we should come up as the, the fourth or fifth option. Um, but it is available to you. Once you get on the Scribble app, you'll find yourself uh, logging on or excuse me, signing on. And once you sign on, you'll see the uh, news feed. Right. So there's a social feed aspect to it. So it kind of gives that that that. Uh, environment that kind of you know camaraderie collaborative environment type of feel right with other creators that are asking questions or are you know talking about what they're trying to do different things like that another thing that's cool that we have is called the scribble library a lot of things that a lot of things people don't talk about or what's hard to find is effective marketing and in that what we offer is called the scribble library Essentially, what we do is what you do is you upload your book to the Scribble library and now it's on our database for everyone to see. So currently uh, Scribble is at six thousand users and we currently have five partnerships. So essentially, if you put your book uh, on our ever growing platform, your book is accessible to over six thousand people. That's amazing. OK, that's pretty fast growth. That's pretty fast growth. And so let's say I'm, I'm an author and I'm. I'm trying out the Scribble app for the first time. And, you know, maybe I'm not so sure about the direction of my book. Can I put up little excerpts from my book here and there to have other authors comment on it? Is that is that possible through the app as well? And that's and I'm, and I'm glad you said that. That's that's what you said, Jim, is one of the things that I'm actively searching for every single day 
is feedback on what could be better or not even what can be better, but okay. what could be useful on the platform. Right. So the, the things we offer right now is being able to post share uh, your different stories, comments, everything like that. The Scribble library. We also offer uh, a marketing tool to where you can write, save and share your notes right on the app itself. So if you have a quick thought uh, as you're on the go, you can go into the app, type your thoughts out, save and it'll be right there for you once you get back. Those are the things that we offer right now. But day in, day out. I'm constantly searching for feedback, as you just mentioned. So uh, for anyone listening, please, if you have any feedback or any recommendations, things you would like to see now that you hear, you know, about Scribble and the idea, whatever you would like to see, please leave in comments or uh, head over to, to the scribbleapp.com, contact us and shoot us over an email and we'll be sure to, to reach back out to you with those. Those are greatly appreciated. Yeah, I like that idea of, um, especially of community and you know putting your 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 work out there. And I think what authors find often is that they're not the only ones who are feeling less than or going through some kind of a fraud syndrome. Like, oh, I, I'm I'm awful. No one's ever gonna like this. And they feel then they they start to relate to other authors who are going through the exact same thing. And I see people in the comments talking about conferences and going to conference. Um, attending conferences and i swear one thing i hear at conferences over and over and over again from some of the most successful authors in the world is how when they go through their first drafts it's awful um they say like oh my god i would be so embarrassed if anybody read this first draft it's just terrible but time and time again they're they're like pleading with newer or aspiring authors to just I hate to use this term, but just like vomit on the paper, just get it out because right. you can't edit something that isn't on the paper or right. on the screen in, in the first place. Right. Um, let's, let's go back a little bit here because um, I love this idea of community uh, because I think it's so important because I, I read a, a quote somewhere. I can't remember who said it, but it was the idea of community and it said that, you know, People will quit companies or they'll quit services, but they'll never quit a, a community, a place where they feel like they belong. I want to take a step back and in your book, I think it was in the introduction um, or just after the introduction, you talk about this idea of being you know, 20 points down. I'm in the game, but I'm 20 points down. Uh, what am I going to do about that? Oh, 20 point, or you said, I think you said, no, I'm, 20, I'm down 20 points again. Um, so am I just going to like put my head down and accept it again and just accept the fact that I'm, I'm a loser? Or I'm going to lose this game too. It's not going to work. Or do you fight back? Like when you get to that point where you fight back, you talk about that a little bit. Like what, how do you get to that point where you're like, I'm tired of this? Yeah, and it's it's always easier said than done because, you know, whatever you're trying to do is always going to be an uphill battle and all the odds are going to be forever not in your favor. Right. So, you know, the, the 20 point scenario was just a uh, a metaphor for saying, hey, when things are just getting tough, when things are super hard. What do you do? And that's a question for each individual. What do you do? Uh, I think the yeah. common answer is to, you know, just you know, I, I, I'll deal with it later or all right, I, I'll just step back from it and not entertain it anymore. But then you find a few right. that say, OK, you know what? This is tough, but it's it's not over. It, it's not over. Right. It's not over. It's still in the game. Never over. Yeah, I can still put up a fight and I can still make it through. And that's where that ideation comes from. And, you know, that's that's kind of just embedded not only in myself, but uh, in my team's culture. Uh, we have the same brick by brick. That means we we take everything a step at a time, right? We don't rush the process. We don't uh, run through anything. We run through challenges, but we don't run away from anything. And we take it really brick by brick as we build. So, you know, in adopting kind of cool slogans like that, it's always cool to say it. It's always cool to hear. But once you actually adopt it into yourself and really say whatever issue that comes my way, whether it's writing first draft or stepping outside of writing, whether it's a business venture yeah. or you know, wanting to make that first move on something is all about what are you going to do when it doesn't go your way, right? What are you going to do? And that's really how champions are made. Yeah, but but it's hard, Tori. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard. So how do you get to the point where, like, 
where you start something and it's so hard and you don't see the next that next step forward um you know obviously you've 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 been through that process you hit that next step and that next step and, and that next step after that and what i'm gathering from listening to you is that you've kind of gotten to the point where you've done this so many times now that you're starting to trust yourself to find that next step that your left foot's going to land again and then your right foot's going to land again does some of that come from your um your experience in the military you think or does that go back to your mom um i was as i was you know reading through your bio and you know preparing for this talk that that phrase embrace the suck kept coming up in my head embrace the suck know that it's going to suck for a while and that you can you can get through that and then i realized well, who said that phrase in the first place that came from the military didn't it and the right. navy seals i think it was right. yeah can you talk about that a little bit more yeah, de definitely. I think uh, it's a combination of all of the above. I, I can't uh, exit out anything because each part of my life uh, in, in each step has taught me something that I've carried with me to today. Yep. I think the 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 fine line and everything and you made a good point, Jim, the fine line and everything. OK, hopping from, you know, this lane to this lane to this lane to this lane. All of it sucks. Right. But what keeps you going? Yeah. I'm going to answer that question right now. And for everyone listening. What keeps right. me going, what keeps me going is this. Before I start anything, I have my why written out and clear. Love it. Not only do I have it written out and clear, but I have it embedded in my heart and I have it embedded in my mind. So that no matter what challenges come up, which are going to come, no matter what rainstorms come, which is going to come, no matter what happens, that you remember why you started in the first place. So yeah. keeping that with you right through the journey, knowing your why is going to help you uh, stay on the journey and then being consistent is going to get you through. So mainly just knowing why you're doing it in the first place. If your why is not strong enough, then that means more than likely the path is going to be ever wavering. Right. And you will you'll constantly battle your conscience between your conscience, your mind, your heart. You'll be in an uphill battle trying to figure out everything. But if your why is rock solid and it's purposeful to you, and it's going to be of service to everyone. Hold on tight to that, and then that'll help get you through. That'll pull you through that mud. That times when you kind of get slogged down. Right. I've noticed in my career and through different endeavors, it could be anything from like public speaking or writing a press release or writing something longer. That there's that period of um of self doubt, of course. Right. Um, and then there's that period of realizing you know, once you've done it. You know, a few times, it doesn't have to be a thousand times, but just a few times you start to recognize, hey, wait a second, you know, I've been here before. I didn't die. Um, I wasn't even laughed at. I, I did it. I could do it again. And you go the next time and it's like, oh, this sucks again. But then you start recognizing that, well, this is supposed to happen. It's going to happen. I need to kind of take this clay and form it and sculpt it a little bit. Um, and then the more you do that, I won't even say the easier it becomes, but you just start to recognize that this is the way it works. And if you can em embrace that, if you can embrace the suck, um, and another term that came out of embrace the suck is, you know, get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable, right. um, because that's the path. Right. It's the, that's what's going to help you grow. You know, and it, no one grows from, you know, tiptoeing through the tulips every day for, right. for their lives. It's those challenges that help us become who we are truly meant to be exactly exactly so every everything everything is needed in that process the rain the sunshine i've never seen a flower grow if it was just sunny outside ever right it takes some it takes some rain as well too some of some of those days we uh rain equals bad days right it takes some of those but that's Absolutely. what it takes in order to you know in order to make it to that next step and you and you hit it right on the mark being you know once you do it you know, two or three times, it doesn't become easy. You know, it only becomes more daunting uh, in some senses, just to be honest. But what it does become is comfortable. You become comfortable with the uncomfortable, as you said, and it allows you to to kind of see it more more for what it is, see it from uh, more straight, uh, excuse me, see it more transparent. Uh, and then you're able to, you know, really just say, OK, like, you know, kind of hard over matter, you know, for or excuse me, uh, hard right. over matter right and in pursuing things so that's really important just you know stepping out there the hardest step is the first step right as you said going back to writing you know you can't edit a blank page right 
your best bet is to try to try to write right try to write don't get into your head um try to write and even being a writer myself how i operate is i i word vomit i word vomit everything i don't initially i don't type out anything and my thought process and that is if you typing out stuff you're going to be distracted why because you're going to see the red line come under something ah man i gotta go back backspace and change that now you done lost a terrific thought you know that that could have been the next sentence or it could have been the next thing in your book yeah. you know just trying to go back backwards and do what you know correct something when you just put it all out and we'll, we'll worry about the race later right just jump off the cliff all right let's figure out how we're gonna fly right and then you grow your wings on yeah. the yeah you just made me think of something and that is then i'll bring up some comments here um but you said just a short time ago that sometimes it doesn't get easier. It gets, it, it's a little harder at first or, or it remains hard. Um, and I think that's so important to bring up because as a creative, when you go through these processes and it's not getting any easier for you, it starts to become exhausting. And then like you mentioned, but that's why you need that why. That's why you need to keep that why close to your heart and, and front and center. But then as you work through that exhaustion, that is why it's so important to have a community, a tribe around you to help support you and lift you up when you're going through those times where you're just, you're like at the brink of giving up. All right. I wanted to bring up this quick comment from Beth who says, who knew writing was so much about your mindset and personal beliefs? And I would underscore that and say, absolutely. And it doesn't matter if it, you're writing fiction our nonfiction, we're both kind of going through the same process. Thousand then percent. I wanted to circle back here. Um, sorry, where'd you go? Because I think it's important. Um, Thomas says, and Thomas, thanks for the comment here. Thomas says, I had a writer's group of over 50 before the pandemic, uh, which groups have got together uh, for writings three times a week, and then COVID killed it. And, and, I, and I miss the people. And I think that happened to a lot of groups, a lot of writers organizations and a lot of writers clubs and say people have brought the that community experience online and others and others didn't. And I think uh, community is just so important for right. so many people. Right. When, can you remind me? I know you mentioned it already, but can you remind me when the Scribble app was launched? We officially launched July 21st, 2023. July 21st, 2023. Oh, wow. So your year anniversary is coming up. It is. You're already at, what, that 5,000 users? 6,000 users. 6,000, sorry. <laughs> 6,000 users. No. No. Yeah, it's, it's a blessing for sure. Here's a question from our buddy Guillaume, who asks, do you accept fictional authors? And if so, what genres do you accept? We accept all authors all authors it doesn't matter this is your safe haven this is your home at scribble we accept everyone do you, do you break it into groups is like are different genres um kind of segmented by well by group or by genre or is it just you can just post your work and let whoever wants to see it see it and and that's a great question. So what happens is once you get on the scribble, you'll see the, the main social feed. So that's pretty much our go to right now. What we're working yeah. on is being able to create those sub communities so people can yeah. begin to you know create their niche groups. So fiction can go with fiction so they can brainstorm together or fan fiction can okay. go with fan fiction and they can get together. So that is our next step. OK, love it. Love it. Let's see. Oh, let me show this one. Another question from Beth who asks, uh, can you talk about the beta reader team that is coming soon on the app? I didn't know about that. Thanks for the question, Beth. Thanks, Beth. That's a great question. So yes, you've uh, let me reveal that we have a, uh, we are building a <laughs> beta reader team. Um, essentially, awesome. essentially, and I, it's always background to everything, right? What we're building at Scribble is not only, uh, uh, a mobile platform, right, for authors and writers, but we're building that that C word that you said earlier, community. Another issue that people face uh, or is having people to read their work, right, having efficient uh, yeah. people to read their work. So what we're doing is scouring around and finding talented people to join our team, not as freelance people, but to actually join Team Scribble. And as a part of Team Scribble, we're building that better reader team to be of service to people. Love it. 
Like, is that something that, well, actually, I was going to ask you if that was an add-on service to the app itself, but is there is there a fee associated with the app? What is the, what is the cost to join the Scribble app? It costs you nothing. Nothing. It is free to download. Come it on. Is free. Yeah, it is free to download. It is free to use. Now, there is a caveat, right? There are in-app okay. purchases. Uh, so we talked about it a little bit earlier with the Scribble library and then the, yeah. the usage of the notes, right? Those are in-app purchases, but that doesn't hinder your experience on Scribble. What a, And going to best question, that's an excellent question. What happened with the beta reader team? We're currently in development for it now. What happened is yeah. it'll be available for Scribble users only, right? So this is a Scribble thing. You got to be a part of Scribble. So Beth, when you join Scribble and our beta team reader, or excuse me, our beta reader team is up and running, you will be able to use the services unlimited, right? What happened is once we get going through the app, uh, you'll be able to literally go through the app at your fingertips, go through it and click one of our beta readers, query them, send your work in, um, and then they will get back to you within 48 hours. And then from there, establishing communications, they'll be able to read your work and then provide you, excuse me, provide you effective feedback. Oh, you have some, uh, you've got some fans here with the free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people don't, uh, people don't expect that very often. So that's really cool. Okay, so I've been, the whole reason I asked about the fee was when Beth asked her question about the beta readers. I'm like, I was thinking, well, they got to charge for, you know, that kind of a service. Um, that's hard to, to, to do, to build right. that stuff. You got to, you know, you have to pay your developers or right. keep the lights on. Right. Um, so what else is coming up, Tori, with the app? Like, are you able to share with us any of the, the plans for the app? Kind of long term or sh shorter term? Like, let's spill it. <laughs> <laughs> the exclusive so i, I will yeah. i will <laughs> so i will say this scribble we are constantly growing constantly growing with uh you know people like beth and everyone that's joining the community uh just waiting for that next step it's already in a good position but of course we're working to get it in an even better position so your feedback is always welcome uh the feedback that we got to even develop you know come up with the uh, beta reader team was from feedback right um, another mm -hmm. thing that we're looking to do is have a team of uh, illustrators, right? So, you know, eliminating uh, the kind of freelance stuff and actually coming to a trusted source that's already vetted out and having your book um, illustrated, right? Your book cover, whatever your needs are. So that's that's a, that's one thing that we're working on. Uh, another thing that we're working on is uh, hopefully this summer we'll be in uh, product development to be able to add uh, more features to where people can go live. So if you're at that writing conference um and you're talking yeah. to someone and you say hey you you on scribble okay get follow me on scribble you know and you're at that writing conference going live showing your experience to everyone else and ultimately building up your 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 author brand as i call it so we're, we're looking to do that uh this summer but it's a lot of great things in store wow you guys don't sleep much do you i don't <laughs> cool <laughs> um our own Alyssa has a question here. Is the Scribble app just on phones or is it desktop too? That's a great question. So currently it's just on your mobile phone. So it's available on the App Store and Google Play Store. So your iPhones and Androids. But that is our next step to work on our web base for Scribble. Awesome. Are you guys, do you have any plans to attend any industry conferences this year? Like, how can we get in touch with you? How can we see you in person and pick your brain? Can we, how can we interact with you online? All that stuff. Definitely. As of now, we're still planning out the schedule. So I'm definitely open to, yeah. uh, you know, whatever Same opportunities, <laughs> whatever opportunities that uh, people may have or, you know, conferences or, you know, all the above may have. But if anything, just head over to the scribbleapp.com, contact us. Uh, and then, you know, shoot, shoot us an email and I'll be happy, more than happy to speak with you uh, about any and everything or just info at the scribble and you shoot that email over and we'll get back to you immediately. OK, scribbleapp.com. Yeah, I. I want to uh, I wanted to also ask you, I meant to do this earlier. So we've talked about the, the, the first book, where do I go from here? We talked about the scribble app. Um, we only have a few minutes left every week. And I think our viewers are going to get sick of me saying this every week. I'm like, 
what? Like this one flew by. Yeah. Um, but do you have the second book you you wrote? Um, is called it's titled "The Right Way to Go." Is that correct? Yes. And it's worth mentioning that both your first book, "Where Do I Go From Here," and "The White and the Right Way to Go," are they both award winners? Or one of them was an award winner, one of them was a finalist, or? Yeah, both. Uh, both. Well, the first one was uh, award winning, or both of them are award winning. The first one was a winner, and the second one was a finalist. Show off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, do, it's do you have any? <laughs> Um, I, you you put in the work. It's obvious that you put in the work. Do you have any other books coming up? Um, I'm, with all your copious amounts of spare time, Tori, do you, are you working on any other projects? You know, in the wee hours of the morning that we should know about books. You know, Fortune 500 company launches. Any? As of now, uh, I'm I'm not in my creative bag, uh, writing wise. Um, Scribble takes up yeah. a lot of my time, just you know, putting in the work, trying to, you know, make sure, uh, you know, we're we're giving people exactly what they need, and that obviously means me, uh, going on and you know, talking to different um, funding or finding different funding uh, resources for us to make that happen. So that takes up a lot of my time. So, but once you know, Scribble is in the place that it is. Uh, uh, will be in i'll get back in my creative bag and uh, i plan to do uh tv shows movies uh actually turning the second book into a movie that is one of my goals are you oh okay. that is one of your goals yeah that's one of my goals so um but yeah that's that's where we are right now well excellent i mean you've got your you've got your work cut out for you just developing the app itself and the ideas that you have seem perfectly suited for the app um as well I wanted to bring in another quick comment here, um, or the question rather, from Alyssa, who asks, is it okay to sign up with a pen name? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, okay, great, 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 great. Um, and we're kind of coming to the end of our time here, Tori. Um, I'm so happy you joined us. I learned so much from you today, uh, not just about the app itself and, and who it's for, but about your mindset that you took to create it in the first place. And so I'm so appreciative of you, like just carving out just a, a few minutes with us all here today. And hey, man, congratulations. I, I, I'm so happy that it's growing and that you've got more things on the horizon that you want to do with the app. Definitely. And again, Jim, thanks so much for having me. It's definitely a pleasure to speak uh, with you, to speak to everyone that tuned in. Again, I'm, I'm not sure if pleasure. I answered uh, all questions, but again, if you have anything for me specifically, just go email info at the scribble And I will, uh, if you direct message me, I will personally direct message you. That's just how it goes. Um, and then again, scribble is for, is for the masses. It's not for me. It's, it's for everyone. So um, we're getting in uh, what everyone's giving us. So you guys are showing us that, hey, like this makes sense um, with 6,000 users. So I'm all in. I'm all in to give you exactly what you need. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And I had a question that I forgot to ask, but is Scribble, is, is it just for writers and authors? Or are you guys welcoming all creators? You mentioned earlier um, some illustrators, but all, all creative types? Yeah, and that's a great question. Yes, all creative types. Our our slogan uh once you go to download the app is where creatives create and that creatives is the umbrella for everyone so we welcome poets uh illustrators everyone under the sun of a creator we welcome you because we want this to be your safe haven where you can come and connect exchange ideas or maybe not exchange ideas or or talk to one someone or maybe just not talk to someone but make it feel like you're not alone in this journey that's what scribble is there for that's beautiful that's a perfect place to end this. Well, Tori, thanks a million for uh, for joining us again today. And, and hang out for a bit. Hang out in the green room. I'm going to go through some some reminders for our viewers here. Um, everyone out there, uh, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to Draft to Digital's YouTube channel because, as I say every week, that helps us attract awesome guests like Tori from week to week. And then also please be sure to bookmark dddlive.com because at that website, you could see who the next week's guests are going to be. Um, next week, we've got a killer one lined up. The next couple of weeks, we have some killer ones uh, lined up for you as well. So go and download and bookmark dddlive.com to see who those guests 
and topics will be. And then finally, if you are an aspiring creative, an aspiring author, why not sign up for your free account at draft digital simply by going to draft to digital.com. And finally, I'm going to end today by running a quick little promo spot for DDD print, but on behalf of draft to digital, and Tori here and all of our viewers out there, thanks again so much for joining us here today. We'll see you next week and happy new year, everybody. Ebooks are great, but there's just something about having your words in print. Something you can hold in your hands, put on a shelf, sign for a reader. That's why we created D2D Print, a print on demand service that was built for you. We have free, beautiful templates to give your book a pro look, and we can even convert your ebook cover into a full wraparound cover for print. So many options for you and your books. And you can get started right now at draft2digital.com.